and welcome to 30 at 6 on Cecil TV. I'm Allison Donnelly. And I am Kitty McKitty. We don't have Rob with us this evening, but Kitty is here to do an interview and hang out with us tonight. Um, so tonight on the show, we have Paul Rickert from the University of Maryland Extension, um, the Cecil County office, and we also have um, a realtor named Deanna from Integrity, and that's through our partnership with APGFCU. Oh, okay, right. And um, what I'm most excited about, of course, my interview, uh, but you know that um, Extension holds a near and dear place mm -hmm. in my heart because I spent so many summers as a kid in 4-H camp in the middle of Missouri at this state park just out of the middle of nowhere. And 4-H for me was such a big part of my life growing up. And I am so happy that we can have someone from the Extension office here. And not just 4-H, they, they cover so many things, give back to the community in so many ways. And you know, I'm excited to start a partnership with them so we can get information out there uh, that you know I wish I would have had growing right. up besides just 4-H. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. Yeah, it's gonna be a good day. The Cecil County Council's work session on May 29th was an opportunity for council members to suggest potential reductions in the county executive's budget before they formally vote on it next week. At least three of the five council people indicated their support of the budget. A few potential areas for reduction were, dis were discussed, but ultimately shut down. We'll have more on this in a few minutes. For the 2018 primary election, the deadline to change your party affiliation or address is June 5th 2018, which is Tuesday of this week. If you live in Cecil County, you've got local, state, and national candidates to vote for in the June 26th primary. Hopefully you've been watching Cecil TV's interviews and panel discussions with the local and national candidates. If you haven't, you can catch up anytime on our website. Don't know where to vote? Visit voterservices.elections.maryland.gov backslash polling place search. This past Saturday, Five of the six Democratic candidates for House of Representatives in District 1 participated in a forum at Elton Library. Topics included the environment, health care, and defense. One takeaway from the afternoon is that all five candidates promised to rally around the nominee in the race to beat incumbent Andy Harris. High school graduations are upon us. Seniors at Rising Sun and Northeast High School will graduate this Thursday, June 7th, while the rest of the Cecil County Public School seniors at Perryville, Bow Manor, and Elkton High Schools will graduate on Friday, June 8th. Congratulations, graduates. The Cecil County Public Library's Children's Book Festival is coming up this Saturday, June 9th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Northeast Town Park. Bring your kids to meet authors, enjoy live music, complimentary sweet treats, and free t-shirts and book vouchers for kids while supplies last. Also coming up this Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. at Cecil College Elkton Station is Born to be Wild, a rockestra performing music of 1968. With the Cecil County Council set to vote on the 2019 county budget this week, last Tuesday's deliberation session offered some indication of how that vote might go. Among the council persons, only Jackie Gregory came with specific areas of the budget where she would like to see cuts, while council members Bowlesby, Schneckenberger, and Methley each said that they would not offer any changes to the budget. Councilwoman Jackie Gregory questioned Cecil County Public Library salary increases, the need for an outside IT security services once a permanent security person is hired, and the county executive office's continued use of a consultant. In all, she, th she said these reductions would amount to $150,000. Some of these cuts were met with a vigorous defense from Dr. McCarthy. These are all vital decisions to basically make Cecil County a 21st century county. I have every intention to grow this county as prudently and as sensibly as I humanly can. We will not, and I will not permit this county to languish in the past. These numbers of dollars are insignificant in comparison to a $309 million budget. I'm real, I understand it's a huge budget, and that's why it's important that we safeguard, because we did have a tax increase, that we safeguard everything we can. And really, my point is this, um, and I'm not suggesting that we get rid of the public information officer. I know that's a position that you found very valuable, 
what I'm saying is what has been done, some of the things that you mentioned, are things that can be done by the executive, which is your position. That's well, things that you can do yourself. Hours the day we don't need that extra position. I, I totally disagree with you. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Charles. For 30 years, I have been practicing functional medicine and gentle chiropractic. Elkton Chiropractic Neurology is dedicated to enhancing whole body rejuvenation. Whether or not you are afflicted with injury or disease, we utilize a structural, neurologic, metabolic, nutritional, and energetic approach to restoring your body to its full potential. After coming to Dr. Charles, I'm better than I was before. You deserve to feel good and to have an active lifestyle. So why not call Elkton Chiropractic Neurology today? I'm home. Wow, it's hot in here. Grandma says call the moon man. <laughs> moon man, the AC is out and my family is melted. At your service. <laughs> there you go. Mission accomplished. Thanks, moon man. <sighs> the house is nice and cool again. Moon man, you're awesome. You're welcome. Just go to moonairinc.com. Today, Cecil County law enforcement officers participated in the Maryland Law Enforcement Torture Up. Runners ran from Elkton to the Northeast Town Park to show support and raise money for the Special Olympics. Internationally, the Torch Run is the largest fundraising and public awareness vehicle for the Special Olympics, and it raised over $56 million in 2016. We spoke to Sergeant Michael Kalinsky from the Cecil County Sheriff's Office. It's a great event that brings law enforcement from across Cecil County together. Today we had police officers from Maryland State Police, Cecil County Sheriff's Office, Town of Northeast, and Elkton running. And uh, we also had a police officer come down from Mannheim Township in Lancaster, PA, and run with us for the first time. So it's for a great cause. It's to benefit the Maryland Special Olympics. Cecil County is one of the many counties that participates in the torch run. So today we ran it to Northeast Town Park. Tomorrow, Harford County Sheriff's Office and State Police will run across Harford County. But again, it, it, it's for the children that uh, go to the Special Olympics. This raises a lot of money through the sale of t-shirts and the hats. So I highly encourage anyone that's interested in supporting a great cause, you can private message us on our Facebook page or go to the Maryland State Police's Northeast Barracks Facebook page and we'll be sure to get you a hat or a t-shirt so you can show your support for law enforcement and the Special Olympics. After the run, participants gathered for a group photo and a well-deserved picnic lunch. Gina, you are a young woman with a true calling. We are so proud of all your success and wish you the best with your nursing career. Love, Mom and Dad. Grant, your success is not a surprise. It's well earned and deserved. We have full confidence in you and we are looking forward to watching your bright future unfold. Love, Mom and Dad. Congratulations to our peach Maggie Smith for graduating from Northeast High School. She will be furthering her education this fall at Millersville. Remember, her name was McGill. Welcome back to 30 at 6. I'm Kitty McKitty and I am here with Dr. Paul Rickert. Yes. And you are from the University of Maryland Extension. You are an area extension director. Correct. So, tell us about the extension. What does it do? Why is it here? Well, that's a big question. Um, probably it's best if I start with a little bit of history so people understand how it came about uh, that we do all this wide variety of things that we do. Um, during the Civil War, back in 1862, wow. the Morrill Act was passed, and what that did is that created land-grant colleges. Okay. And the land-grant colleges were designed to take all of this federal land that we'd accumulated since the Louisiana Purchase in 1803 and then on westward and, and try and use that in a way that would benefit the public at large. And it's really one of our first forays into public higher education in the United States at any large level. Uh, what, what they did in the Morrill Act is give each 
institu uh, each institution 30,000 acres per representative and senator to be used to uh, fund the institution, whether they harvest natural resources, they sell the land at a profit, or they build an institution right there on the land that they'd been given, and use that to create endowment to fund uh, public institutions in the states. So what they did, uh, various states did different things. Some sold, some built there. Um, well, and then in 1887, uh, another bill was passed that created agricultural research stations around the country. And then after that, in 1890, a second moral act was passed that created land-grant institution uh, for about 17 historically black colleges or universities, um, in, usually in the southern states. And then, fast forward a little bit, uh, just before World War I, the federal government's looking at uh, all this money they'd put into the state's higher education, and they kind of wanted to get a little bit back, at least in the yeah. sense that they didn't want to say, okay, here's an institution, everybody come to the institution. What they did in, with the Smith-Lever Act in 1914 was they said that we're going to create a system across the United States called the Cooperative Extension System. And the Cooperative Extension System is going to be a partnership between the federal government, the state government, and local governments. So the states that got the land-grant dollars, mm -hmm. they were required to take the education out to the communities. Now this isn't oh, your okay. four-credit college institutional type of education, but it is science-based, research-based um, research uh, education that we take out to the communities, okay. but it's non-formal. Got it. So they required Cooperative Extension to do that. So in 1914, Cooperative Extension is born, and they start taking education in all sorts of arenas out to the communities. Uh, here in Maryland, when we started with Cooperative Extension, we were looking at agriculture and improving rates of return uh, for farmers, improving their growth of their crops, uh, minimizing uh, what they're putting down as fertilizer uh, that we know also has impacts directly on the Chesapeake Bay, which is another area we work in. Um, eventually, we passed some laws here in Maryland about 20 some years ago that said that we need to have nutrient management plans. Well, we provide nutrient management plans for those who are required to have them for free in, wow. in, the, in the extension service here uh, in Maryland. And so people can come in and get their program written for them, and that requires with MDA, Maryland Department of Agriculture, mm -hmm. and MDE, Maryland Department of Environment's requirements. And so that's one of the many services that we provide. But then we also, at the same time as co the uh, Cooperative Extension was birthed, 4-H was rolled in to Cooperative Extension. And so 4-H is something that falls under us, youth development and all the various programs and camps and um, clubs and from everything from uh, the county fair. The, the county fun stuff fair. That I love. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, everything from arts and crafts yep. to horticulture to horsemanship to rearing sheep and goats and steer. And uh, pigs. and pigs. Don't that's pigs. right. Don't want to forget the swine. Yeah. That's what that's what my family did. We okay. Did. Okay, but uh, so we also work in agriculture, obviously, as I'd mentioned, and horticulture and home gardening, and mm -hmm. we also uh, run the Master Gardener uh, program in the state of Maryland. Wow. Um, and so we have about 35 or 40 Master Gardeners uh, here in Cecil County uh, that go out, and you may have seen them at the farmer's markets uh, at where they uh, have Ask a Master Gardener, Ask a Ma oh, Ask a Master Ask. Gardener booths. That is hard to say. <laughs> uh, and they can help you identify bugs or pests right. <laughs> or things like that that you may not know what they are. Can they tell me why every time I buy an orchid within a month it's dead even though I follow the instructions exactly? They probably could. Okay, then I'm going to have to find them. <laughs> I am struggling with that. <laughs> Yeah, but um, so not only master gardening and horticulture and agriculture and 4-H, but we also do um, nutrition. And so we have wow. nutrition educators, because if you think about it, food systems and health are intricately linked, right? And making right. sure that the food that you need is getting to you. 
So there's transportation involved, there's storage, we teach canning classes, uh, oh, some of these cool. lost arts in many ways, right? Um, oh, I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have uh, partnerships with social services and Department of Health and teach classes on basic nutrition for those who get SNAP Ed benefits and other types of social service benefits to help make sure that they're understanding uh, about nutrition and where their dollars go when they're trying to feed their family. Uh, we also have people that teach uh, personal finance and oh, wow. so they can uh, help you understand budgeting and understand compounding interest and things like this. And they'll work with you over a period of time. It's not just a one-off and, and done. Uh, and then we also have, yes, it's, it's been very beneficial for a lot of people. Uh, and then we also have 4-H uh, Outreach, which is a, a program where we uh, don't have a traditional club, but we have a club that is based on various interests uh, geographically. So oh. here in Cecil, County, we have clubs at Windsor Village and Rudy Park and, and a few other places around, uh, around the county. We wow. also partner with the library and so we go and we teach classes whether it be in STEM or robotics or uh, just uh, having fun with the kids sometimes when we're not quite sure what we're going to teach uh, or because we're not sure who's going to show up for a given program. That can be a little more difficult but uh, the, the more stable clubs where we're teaching robotics and STEM and 3D printing and things of this nature, nature uh, are, are a lot of fun. Amazing. Well, yeah. thank you for coming in and I look forward to talking to you more about specific programs. Certainly. Uh, is there a website, Facebook page, anything where people can kind of look up and see some of the programs that are offered? Sure. Uh, if you go to extension.umd.edu forward slash Cecil hyphen county, you can find us, or you can just in your Google homepage, you can type Cecil extension and it'll take you right there. Great. Well, Dr. Rickard, thank you and look forward to hearing back from you uh, so we can get some more in depth about specific programs. Great. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Kevin Urich is a candidate for state's attorney. I ask your help protecting the elderly. Too often, seniors suffer physical abuse, emotional abuse, financial exploitation abandonment and neglect. When elected state's attorney, I will advocate for the elderly. I will bring together police, social workers, nurses, doctors, and others dedicated to protecting and caring for the elderly. I am Kevin Urich and I approved this message. Paid for by friends of Kevin Urich, Vicki Richards, treasurer.
Main Street Revitalization is more than a concept. Take a look around at the all new and updated businesses we now enjoy. Coffee shops, hair salons, health food stores, catering shops, and many more diverse uh, business owners who now call Main Street home. While you're here, please take the opportunity to visit uh, Plumpton Park Zoo, our local winery, Dub Valley. We encourage you to enjoy the great food, musicians, dances, and local vendors who will make today a memorable day. Have a wonderful Sunfest, thank you guys. For horse racing fans and for those seeking a fair-like atmosphere, there was no better place to be this past Saturday than the 84th meeting of the Fair Hill Races. Attendees enjoyed the cooperating weather, vendors, food, refreshments, and a full race car. I'm here with Russell Kovac of the Fair Hill Races. Russell, what brings you out here today? Well, uh, my son is a huge fan of horses, and so this gets him close to horses, and uh, I've always wanted to come. I've, uh, Growing up in the area, so the steeplechase here has been a thing, and of course over at Oregon Ridge, so I was like, wow, this is a good chance to get him near some horses, see something I've always wanted to do, and it's a beautiful day. What's been your favorite part of the day so far? Oh, I think getting to share this with my son, and he's excited, and all the races have been close, so he's been standing up and rooting, <laughs> and uh, it's a lot of, kind of a good little family banner going on. That's awesome. I hope you have a great rest of the day. It's a great time. I'm very glad to come here. Thanks. Taking advantage of the crowds, several office seekers made use of this event to meet the people and spread the word. I'm here with Amanda Bessix at the Fair Hill Races. Amanda, what brings you here today? Uh, the races. Um, we joined in on a tent uh, for everybody, so we're out here meeting lots of new people. We're getting to see the horses race. We have a great position here. Um, so that's really what brought us in is just to, you know, number one, keep campaigning and keep getting out there. But it's such a great event, too. It brings so many people in. And what's your favorite part of the day so far? Actually, I'm loving seeing the horses come in right behind us here. So that's actually really nice to see the horses come in and then they actually come up, sorry, behind us. I know I'm pointing, but sort of right behind us there too. They're coming in there. So that's really awesome too. And then the horses finish right by us. Um, so that's sort of been my favorite part about the day. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. While the real excitement was on the track, Governor Hogan's appearance later in the day highlighted the importance of the Fair Hill event to both Cecil County and the state. Cecil TV's Allison Donnelly had a chance to speak to the governor. Governor Hogan, welcome to Cecil County. Well, thank you so much. It's great to be here. What brings you out to the Fair Hill races today? Well, there's uh, thousands of people out here having a great time with some races. It's uh, got a tremendous tradition, 84 years, and uh, I can't think of any place I'd rather be on Memorial Day weekend. As you know, Fair Hill was just endorsed as a five-star eventing facility. And this is so exciting for Cecil County. It's one of only seven facilities in the world. Why is this important, not just for Cecil County, but for the state of Maryland? Well, it's critically important, and we're very supportive of it. And a great team of folks here in Cecil County and the folks at the state level all came together to try to help uh, get that uh, mm -hmm. designation. And uh, we're just excited. It means a lot for uh, not just for uh, the sport and for Cecil County, but for the whole state of Maryland. And switching gears just a tiny bit, um, do you see an opportunity for Maryland in the Supreme Court's decision to strike down the ban on uh, sports betting? Well, I think that's something that will be addressed in the next legislative session, and then it'll be put on the, a ballot in 2020 for the voters to decide. Great. Thank you so thank much. You. I'm home. Wow, it's hot in here.
Grandma says call the Moon Man. <sighs> moon Man, the AC is out and my family is melted. At your service. <coughs> there you go. Mission accomplished. Thanks, Moon Man. <sighs> the house is nice and cool again. Moon Man, you're awesome. You're welcome. Just go to moonairinc.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Charles. For 30 years, I have been practicing functional medicine and gentle chiropractic. Elkton Chiropractic Neurology is dedicated to enhancing whole body rejuvenation. Whether or not you are afflicted with injury or disease, we utilize a structural, neurologic, metabolic, nutritional, and energetic approach to restoring your body to its full potential. After coming to Dr. Charles, I'm better than I was before. You deserve to feel good and to have an active lifestyle. So why not call Elkton Chiropractic Neurology today? I'm Hannah Thiel, a life science teacher at Rising Sun Middle School, 7th grade. Um, and over the past couple years, we have been taking the 7th grade students to Stone Run Creek, which runs right here through Rising Sun. And we've been doing water analysis, water quality testing. Um, we've been testing the physical components, the chemical components, as well as the biological components of the stream. And we've been monitoring the health. Um, and over time, we've seen a slight decrease in the health of this stream, at least at the one site that we've been testing. And so we plan to continue to monitor the stream, as well as try to implement other projects that might be able to benefit the health of this stream. Okay, so something that I learned was that the importance and impact that our stream really has on the Chesapeake Bay, like I never really realized how important it was to the entire like environment and ecosystem around us. For me, I liked that we got to join schools from all over the state to do this, and it was very fun, and I'd like to know that we made a change, and we helped with the um, summit collect data with the water. Does it excite you to do more with science, or maybe pursue careers in science? Yeah, because like just like going to the stream and getting involved in everything like gives you a little insight into what it's really like to have that kind of job and that kind of field and how interesting and fun it is to do that kind of thing. Yeah, and when we went to Annapolis, we went on the boat, and I thought that was really fun. I loved looking at all the organisms and learning about all that.